Ocelot said the number of private forces is increasing, and they've modeled themselves after us. They're a far cry from the likes of us. But why? Nine years ago, we made enemies of the world as a nuclear-equipped force, independent of ideology or state. Yes. Sooner or later, the real UN would have stepped in. So why are they giving these PFs free reign? That's our fault, too. What do you mean? What happened nine years ago was a real problem for a lot of people. An organization as big as ours, with our facilities, was wiped off the map. Not an easy thing to hide. But if our existence came to light, so would the names of our clients. We had contracts all over, east and west, from superpowers to banana republics, the lot. Our clients denied all association with the likes of us. They had to make sure things didn't blow up on them. But at the same time, they missed us. They really missed us. The demand for armies for hire was as strong as ever. The international community turned a blind eye to what happened to us, despite still needing people who could do our jobs. History couldn't afford to lose us. As soon as we were gone, they needed a replacement. So private forces spread everywhere. And they're all just a phone call away. But still... I know. PFs are totally different from what we envisioned. Nation states, revolutionaries, terrorists. They have a lot of clients. And Cypher is one of them. Cypher stays anonymous. But I know their work when I see it. In the eyes of those clients, the world's PFs are all just expendable pawns. The clients don't have to worry about losing their own men. Nobody knows they're involved, and PFs are cheap. In short, the world is chewing up soldiers and spitting them out. Even some of the old Mother Base's survivors are still working for PFs. Some guys created their own smaller forces. Others were taken on by emerging PFs. Everybody's gone their separate ways. But none of them are living their dream because they're not fighting with you. Of course, I tried to headhunt as many of them as I could for Diamond Dogs. It was all a waste of time. They said they weren't interested without you to lead them. But now you're back. And everything's gonna change. We'll unite all private forces under you, transcending nations and economies. What is a nation? Just a patch of dirt. The bonds among us will surpass nations. And that's what'll put the world under our control. We'll establish a new kind of country, redefine the very concept of it. Even Cypher will be below us, an extraterritorial federation of military nations, the United States of Force. Once word of Big Boss's return starts traveling, that'll be our true deterrent against Cypher. In other words, no one will dare to come gunning for you. How do you figure? Cypher lacks a large-scale fighting force, PFs are the perfect tool for them. But those PFs revere you. The legendary Big Boss. If Cypher killed you now, they wouldn't take it lying down. Maybe they'd even go looking for revenge. But they definitely wouldn't keep doing Cypher's dirty work, even if it put their lives at stake. That's why it's no longer a benefit to Cypher to get rid of you. The very fact that you're alive is our greatest defense against Cypher. Nice to know. It'll buy us some time while we get back to full strength. Just keep in mind that what I'm saying is generalizing a lot. In practice, the PFs around the world don't know your face. Just declaring that your big boss won't be enough to convince them. And if they see you as an enemy, they'll come at you with everything they've got. Some hero. That's why you need to bring them back to Mother Base. Show them on your terms that you really are the one and only big boss. Once you've proven that, they won't hesitate to join us.